Lance Adam here from HCash. Andrew here from HCash. And we're here at Monash University uh, talking to Dr. Joseph and his team uh, in regards to the tech that is behind uh, the HCash platform and what's going on at the Monash uh, Blockchain Lab. Okay. So, Dr. Joseph, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what's happening with the Blockchain Lab at the moment? Yeah, currently we are improving our algorithm that we have published in the middle of this year. And the main improvement comes from the size. You know, uh, the current one, the size will be very large if you include lots of other, other users to anonymize yourself. So that's why it may only support up to a small amount of users. And currently we target to further improve this algorithm so that for example you can improve you can include lots of users and to increase the level of user privacy. Right. Now uh, can you please uh, introduce uh, your team uh, to yeah, us? Sure. Yeah, he is uh, Dr. Ron and uh, he's a senior lecturer here and he's a mean a lecturer and also Verbonica is our research fellow. All of us work in the same project. Sure. Now, um, if I speak to you for a second, Ron, um, would you be able to tell us about what you're doing in the uh, blockchain lab at the moment? Yeah, so I'm working on the de uh, developing this um, uh, improved efficiency protocols for, uh, as Joseph mentioned, um, and we're focusing now on um, the efficiency of these protocols based on uh, quantum resistant cryptography. So we're using lattice space cryptography that is one of the main, main candidates for this uh, quantum resistance. And we're trying to uh, uh, improve the parameters for this type of uh, crypto systems, which is quite different to the traditional um, classical systems that are used at the moment in most uh, blockchains. Very good. Um, and uh, Amin, is it? Yes, yes, yes Amin. Yes. Um, can you explain a little bit about what yeah. you're doing at the moment? Yeah, so we are all involved in the same project. We are all uh, having the same goal of uh, improving the efficiency of our algorithm. I'm uh, helping more on the maths side of On the maths side of things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On the security proofs, uh, on, the, on, the, on the developing the models and then uh, sticking to the models finding right proofs here and there, like more mathematics and mathematical artifacts of the, the development that we have in mind. Well, I'm glad that we've got people like you <laughs> working on this. So, and uh, Veronica, uh, what, what are you doing at the moment in the blockchain? <laughs> yeah, since we are all working together, we are mainly doing all, all the same things. So I'm also working on the efficiency of the current protocol, which we designed just a few months ago. Yeah, I'm also focused on the mathematical side of, uh, of the construction. So we are, I'm trying to construct uh, more efficient uh, protocols or systems and, uh, which will provide better proofs. I, mean, I think that uh, HCash and Colinstar are very lucky to mm -hmm. have all of you on board to help us out with these sort of things. Um, it's great to have uh, such fantastic minds uh, that really know the tech behind all of this. Uh, it's certainly not something that uh, the normal layman person would be able to, <laughs> to achieve. So, okay. Um, also, uh, Veronica, um, can you give us some of your ideals on, on what you think about blockchain? Um, well, what do you mean? Well, how do you think that blockchain would be able to help, say, uh, the real world or, or society? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, what we are doing, we are trying to um, build this uh, cryptocurrency and the decentralized one, but um, we, we are also especially focused on the uh, anonymity of, mm -hmm. um, of this construction. And what do you think anonymity uh, does, yeah, does yeah. For, the, uh, for the blockchain? Um, what's, what's the advantage of it? Um, yeah, it... it uh, keeps the identity of the uh, payer who is involved in the um, in the payment system and helps to keep the identity of the of the payer secret so i mean it's i think it's 
very important. important. <laughs> also, that, that's really the big thing that, that the team's been working on. It's not just um, you know the anonymity, but also um, uh, the security. Yeah, well, security, uh, real world functionality, uh, being resistant to the, the quantum computers that are uh, in, in um, are being built as we speak, mm -hmm. and really bringing all that together. And how is it that this type of technology can be used? in a, a, a corporate a company or a, a small business, how can they apply this type of um, mm -hmm. security and all the uh, advanced technology we're working on? So yeah. that's, that's really how it all needs to come together. You can't yeah. just work on one or the other. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, actually our algorithm can be not only applied to the public cryptocurrency. Say later, if some companies they want to use this blockchain technology in the, as a private chain, for example, we can also uh, put our algorithm into the, into the blockchain system. So it's a quite a generic, but not just specifically to one particular cryptocurrency. And of course, we will publish the algorithm once we have uh, completely developed it. Mm. So we, we, we do the things to benefit to the whole community. Mm. So this is our purpose, our goal. Well, I, I think that that is the purpose behind blockchain myself. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is to uh, be used in, in a more worldwide yes, exactly. uh, application yes, yeah. uh, for businesses, for governments, yes. and education, yeah. and many, many uh, applications mm. yes. for it. Okay. Uh, Ron, what do you uh, feel about blockchain technology? Um, I think that uh, it uh, it has a potential to, to make payments a lot easier mm -hmm. than they are currently and to, to allow with technology like we are developing, it, it may help people to be less concerned about their uh, privacy of what they are buying and, and so on um, because we, we have quite advanced mechanisms to protect this uh, privacy. So I think that's kind of an ad a big advantage over the many existing mechanisms like paying by credit cards and, and so on and also it may be much harder to for um, malicious parties to uh, kind of uh, steal your money in this uh, system because it's based on strong cryptography for authentication and you don't have to reveal your secret like your credit card number every time you pay mm. Uh, which later may be exposed to, to, to hackers and so on. So I think that's one of, another big advantage uh, in terms of security. Sure. So yeah, when it comes to, you know, it's a perfect example that you know, governments, banking, if they're looking to interact with each other, there is something that's very sensitive, very private, um, needs that high end security. Um, we can't, well, they can't take, anybody can't take any risks on, you know, what what is out there, what could potentially uh, infiltrate the system and, and be able to gain access to the sensitive data. So it's very important that uh, we're much ahead of the game and the technology we're working on is uh, resistant and capable to protect and not just hoping that when the threat comes we'll address it, is to be uh, much ahead of the game and, and be on top of that uh, so we don't have that problem at all. Future proofing. You can see, you can see, see what's foreseeable and, and these quantum computer, computers and it's not actually known exactly, they might be a lot more powerful than we first predicted so we need to be, uh, I suppose, have that very good baseline that we can build on top of because it's not so easy just to implement uh, new things uh, that need to be researched and a lot of time, we've got a whole team uh, working on this now so it's not something that you can just sit down and crunch some numbers and come up with a solution, so. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, so uh, maybe if we could go around uh, each one of the team and, and get more of a background on, on each of you. Um, so Ron, uh, can you just let us know uh, what you've been working on in the past and uh, what you think the future is? Yeah, sure. So. Yeah, I mean, personally, I've been working uh, for almost 20 years in cryptography research, and uh, I've started um, working on uh, uh, different types of authentication and uh, privacy mechanisms in cryptography. Um, in recent years, I, I've focused mostly on um, algorithms uh, that are resistant to quantum attacks, uh, in particular lattice-based cryptography, and 
Um, this is an area that has been developing a lot over the last 10 years especially, and there's a lot more uh, powerful tools in this area now to construct things like um, cryptocurrencies. So I'm still very interested in the future to continue on this um, to ba base, based on this foundation to, and extend it to other applications um, because it's still um, relatively early in, in the development of this technology and it's still lagging behind in efficiency compared to sure. the earlier technologies. So yeah. I think that's an important direction for the future. I totally agree. Yeah, I totally Absolutely. agree. Um, one of the things that uh, both myself and Andrew face a lot when we're out in the uh, cryptocurrency community and the blockchain community is uh, finding people calling themselves blockchain experts um, and it automatically makes us a, a little uneasy when somebody says that they're an actual blockchain expert because uh, what we've seen in, in the blockchain is that it is such an early stage and sure, there are people that are experts in certain fields of, of blockchain, but to call yourself an uh, expert in all of blockchain, uh, I think it's, uh, it's a pretty foolish thing to be saying. So uh, it, it's very, I'm very happy to hear someone say that it's such a, a new thing, you know, that uh, even the professors that are working on this are still finding something new. So uh, it's great to hear. And what about yourself? I mean? um, yeah, look, um, I'm, I'm a mathematician by heart, and I got a PhD also in mathematics, and since my PhD, I, I am been doing all cryptography, uh, like in my PhD, I was doing symmetric cryptography, um, and then um, during my first postdoc, I was doing a little bit of physical layer security. It's more down to the uh, physical layer of the communication rather than the application that we have in mind. And then uh, since 2015, I'm being involved in post-quantum cryptography, all sorts of post-quantum cryptography, and especially lattices. Mm -hmm. And Euclidean lattices, and their, uh, I mean, all their applications in all sorts of areas. I'm, I'm doing all this. And uh, um, I believe security in general, cyber security in general, is a pretty hot topic. Yes, and, yeah, indeed. I and totally uh, agree. We are, and we all have to uh, kind of uh, invest on it, uh, th I mean, uh, think about it, and, and kind of be. Be involved in, in, in this area. Sure. It's like um, the t t t technology just generally moves so fast. So mm. something that's considered to be extremely safe and secure and encrypted today, mm. five or ten years might be uh, maybe uh, just completely vulnerable. Yes. So, um, uh, so it really highlights the importance on, on what you're working I on. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And uh, Veronica, um, can we get a little bit of your background? Yeah, my background is also in mathematics. I did my master's degree in mathematics, and um, then I um, did my PhD in, um, in applied cryptography. But I was working on um, classical cryptography and on the post-quantum one. So I was mainly focused on designing and distributed protocols and um, applications of those protocols in the uh, real world. and. Um, I finished my PhD around two years ago, and, and then I, I worked as uh, also as a research fellow. And um, after my PhD, I actually got uh, uh, interested in um, post quantum cryptography because I yeah I started reading more about it. And as you Andrew mentioned, that um, in, in a few years probably or in some years uh, when quantum computers will be available to the public, then many cryptographic systems will, will, be, will become vulnerable against post-quantum attacks. So I, I got focused on uh, post-quantum cryptography and I was in, in the last few years I was working on this um, research area, designing um, post-quantum resistant protocols. And now I'm continuing working on it and uh, yeah, since I think it's an important topic, I would also like to... <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <coughs> Now, um, that's a, a good subject that you just 
brushed upon actually um, when we're talking about mainstream quantum computing mm -hmm. and that uh, sure it won't be here for maybe five ten years before it's available to uh, the public yeah. um, it, it's not so much that that, that we tend to worry about uh, I think it's more um, another body that may be able to get a hold or, or develop a quantum computer um, and then the, the whole blockchain, uh, businesses, governments, everything will be at risk at that stage. Um, so, yeah. Just need one. You just one, need one. that one. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. was at risk. Yeah. So, um, Dr. Joseph, this is something that we've touched upon uh, a couple of times now. Yeah, successfully. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, obviously, when. Um, someone has developed a quantum computer, they're, they're not going to be telling other people, yes, we've got a quantum computer, and uh, watch out, everybody in your banks are not safe, your government's not safe. Um, we, you would agree upon that, that sort of uh, ideal that uh, it's not the mainstream quantum computing that we need to worry about at the moment, that it's more a, a, a body that can be able to uh, produce a quantum computer? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, though we are not working on this area to create a quantum computer, we have to do some um, mechanism to prevent. Uh, when this happens, we still want to secure our skin. Mm. And that is what we are doing and we can do. That is to prepare for the future, mm. to prepare the security, not at this moment, not today, but also to 10 years later, 20 years later. Mm. This is our mission. Absolutely. Okay, uh, do you have any other questions? No, I think it's great to, um, to be able to explain some of the backgrounds and, and things that people have been working on. Um, there's a lot of hard work and um, a lot of testing and before a paper can be published or anything can be proposed, I'm sure there's a, a lot of trial and error and vigorous mm -hmm. testing that goes into this yes. to actually find a platform that can be built on top of. Yes. So although there might be um, you know, one algorithm or a certain um, uh, way of doing things that that's, uh, shouldn't underpin uh, all, all the um, all the work that's uh, been done to actually get uh, to that result. So mm. it's, it brings me to a, another uh, thought. When uh, I was at a conference uh, recently, mm. we were talking about why don't we just use uh, the Bitcoin platform or the Ethereum platform that's already been developed. And uh, one of the things that I was saying was that if you don't keep up, then you get left behind, basically. Yes. So uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that is the way that technology is growing. If you just use the existing one, well, you can use immediately, but how about in the future? When this happens to be not secure, then your system will be finished. Yeah. So that's why we need to develop more um, advanced technology. And this is the point that I, as a researcher is doing, to work on more advancement to benefit to the society, to benefit to the community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, really just um, you know, thank you for your time and um, uh, you know, look forward to all the um, future developments and mm -hmm. um, any new papers that have been submitted, to the mm -hmm. findings of that. Um, mm -hmm. We'll be very excited to, to mm -hmm. be able to present them as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'd like to thank all of you for your time and we know that your time is very valuable so uh, we're very happy that you were able to give your time up to us to, to have a little bit of a chat and an interview on, on the blockchain and uh, the tech that we need to put behind it. So, okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. And that's uh, Adam, Andrew and Dr. Joseph and his team uh, signing off and we'll see you with our next report.